Today I'm going to talk about JavaScript. Why JavaScript? This is a chart from GitHub that shows that JavaScript is currently the most popular language in GitHub. Uh, it has the most open repositories, and this is most likely due to JavaScript's outsized importance in web development. You can do a lot of neat things with a few lines of JavaScript and some JavaScript libraries, and I'm going to show you something that I created. Um, I created a small uh, website. This is just the entire HTML code, and then we go to the actual JavaScript file, and what this JavaScript file does is it connects to a SQL Server database that's hosted on Microsoft's Azure, so it's hosted on the cloud. And as you can see, it has a lot of the standard, uh, it has a lot of, uh, it has the same skeleton as our uh, database desktop applications. We have our configuration details, once we have our configuration details, we open up a database connection. Uh, and then we execute the SQL query, and then the function to execute the SQL query is here, and, and you can see the actual SQL query here. Um, and when we run it, we retrieve our results here. Now looking at this JavaScript code, a lot of things seem very familiar. Uh, I'm looking at the var, which uh, must mean, oh, this is a variable. But I don't see any types anywhere. Uh, we just have var connection, var config, var connection. So what's that about? Um, let's talk a little bit about JavaScript types. Now, why types? Well, in order to kind of under really understand JavaScript, you kind of have to go back to the basics. Um, and it's hard to get at the basics, really, because JavaScript isn't really taught as an academic language. So uh, we, as uh, software developers and web developers, have to learn this on our own. Um, so the basic JavaScript types, we have string, number, boolean, null, undefined, and object. But what I'm really going to focus on is object. Um, and anything that is not one of the five above is an object. So for example, something like an array would be an object. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate that here with some coding. Okay, so here I've declared something called my info, which is just going to be kind of a generic uh, variable. And we're going to declare this as we would a C array. And then we're going to push uh, several integers. Well, here they're just numbers, uh, which would represent maybe the classes I'm taking at any one point. And I'm going to decide to, to print this information. Now, we might expect this to print as an array, and it did. However, when we look at the type for my info, type, uh, type of my info, you can see that it is an object. Now, this is kind of strange. What could this mean? Well, in JavaScript, objects are, uh, since an, an, an array is, an, an array is recognized as an object. Um, and so, for example, uh, let's try something. Let's try to create an object on the fly. Let's try to add information for my info. Let's try to add name. Here, which is my name. We might expect this to not work. Uh, we might expect this to throw an error, but it doesn't. Um, this is because since my info is already an object, uh, JavaScript just kind of accepts that name is going to be a new attribute of this object. It's going to be a new field. So when we go ahead and we print our object, It prints out all of it, including the three integers that I've, that I've added in and this new ad object attribute called name. Now this looks kind of familiar, or it should cut look kind of familiar. I mean, it looks, um, these are kind of written in a standard arrays. This is kind of in standard array notation. But then here it looks like we have a key value, a key and here it looks like we have a value. And in fact, we can right away access object information as we can access object information as we would look up something in a hash map or dictionary. So for example, if I 
run the if I try this uh, it's gonna print out my name here and it recognizes as if I was indexing into a hash map using a string and returns the value that way. Um, but as I said, uh, this array uh, is automatically an object in JavaScript. So what else do objects have besides uh, attributes such as, you know, a number or a string? They also have functions. And in and, and to add a simple function into this object, for example, let's try to add, I'm going to try add a student ID attribute. I'm going to just say it's 34. Um, and now I'm going to try to create a function called uh, change ID. I'm going to... And this looks like an anonymous function, much like uh, what we did with, uh, C with C++ and F Sharp. Uh, and in JavaScript, you can create anonymous functions. And it is something that is used quite a lot in, in web development. So I'm going to change my uh, student ID to whatever parameter is passed. And then I can call my info change ID, and I'm going to pass in the parameters 256. And then I'm going to print my info down here. Now let's see if this works. As you can see here, our object that is now printed down here, we have our three classes, the name attribute, my student ID has been changed to 256 while it was initially 34. And the change ID uh, attribute is listed as a function. So this is just some of the, I was just hoping to demonstrate some of the weirdness uh, that is JavaScript and JavaScript objects. Um, a lot of things here are things that are impossible to do or very hard to do in C. And I hope that I've convinced you that uh, there's a lot of things that you might not expect uh, in JavaScript and that JavaScript is uh, kind of worthy of going back to the basics and, and taking a hard, looking, hard look at it uh, from the ground up. Uh, one more thing I want to show is these are some of the sources that I've used in order to prepare this, this and to learn about JavaScript. Uh, I recommend these books and I've learned a lot from looking at them. Thank you.